Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Stephen Dunphy. Um, today I'm going to be presenting a paper on physical layer authentication for wireless security enhancement, current challenges and future developments. Um, currently in today's networks most of the security measures take place at the upper layers of the security model. Um, authentication is generally handled above the physical layer um, timely sharing of security keys is growing in highly complex networks and it's becoming more difficult due to the high computational costs. Um, hackers are getting increased processing ability and that makes it easier for them to crack these digital keys which you know previously had been thought to be unbreakable um, and generally physical layer attributes are disregarded um, identification and access rights are generally only validated through digital keys and not done through any physical layer means. So this paper wanted to focus on some of the physical layer authentic authentication advantages. Um, wireless transmitters can be validated at the physical layer. Um, the physical characteristics are directly related to the communication device and this is a good thing because it makes it much more difficult to impersonate these characteristics. Um, they also contain reciprocal channel properties and they have analog front end properties which is a concept that we're going to explain later in the presentation. Um, the purpose of the paper generally they want to do identify the technical challenges of physical layer authent authentication um, and they kind of took three directions for overcoming these challenges. Um, the first was a multi-attribute and multi-observation technique, which we'll explain later. Um, a physical layer key generation using a composite security key, a composite key between the physical layer and the upper layers. And then they wanted to explore predicted physical security context sharing for future 5G heterogeneous networks. So basically they want to look at um, 5G is coming and is going to be a highly used network solution so they want to look at how physical security can play into that. First off we want to go over some challenges for physical layer authentication. Um, the first is low reliability of physical layer authentication. Um, Channel-based authentication uses radiometric features of a specific transceiver pair and this can be used to differentiate authorized transmitters and spoofing transmitters which is which is an advantage but monitoring this is difficult when stationary cha or channels are not stationary you've got highly dynamic environments you know you have mobile phones communicating uh, with wireless towers and vehicle to vehicle communications and things like that all throw a monkey wrench into the ability of the lower layer physical authentications. Um, and then one of the attributes that they want to leverage is AFE which is analog front end imperfections that arise due to fabrication differences in different devices and basically this, this just means that various devices when they're produced have different unique things about the signals they send out, the way they send the signals out, the frequencies that they're sent out on, and these specific device characteristics can be used for authentication. Um, the problem with that is that the hardware attribute differences might be very small and the accuracy to be able to read these differences and signal noise um, can be reduced by with interference, so that becomes an issue. Um, some more challenges. Um, integrating with existing network infrastructure and authentication protocols. So, like I said previously, physical layer authentication is not used very often right now, so it needs to be developed as a complement to the upper layer protocols that already exist. Um, cross layer between layers authentication is challenging, um, and new methods of crypt cryptography need to be created. Um, in order to enable this cross-layer authentication. Um, extend de device device physical layer authentication. Um, in large networks, key exchanges right now normally take place 
between devices that are not directly linked on the network, that they're end-to-end -end communications that are not necessarily um, providing security between a direct, directly linked device. And so a process must develop for non-direct links at the physical layer. So physical devices that are not directly linked together need to somehow be able to communicate with each other. Another set of challenges is, as I mentioned before, authentication in complex heterogeneous networks, um, i.e. 5G networks. Um, wireless infrastructure will likely evolve into 5G in the future. Um, this is going to dramatically increase teletraffic. Um, it's going to increase switching between access points because there's going to be more access points. Um, traditional cryptography and key exchanges are based on multiple handshakes and there's a lot of processing that needs to be done to make that happen and so you could have issues with latency as a result. Um, so the paper had some proposed solutions of how to get around these physical layer challenges. Um, their first solution was reliability enhancement by multi-attribute multi-observation. Um, this is a technique that they propose to basically look at utilizing both the channel-based techniques, which are, te which are techniques that are just between two devices, the channel that's between them, and they could create a unique physical connection and be verified on that front. And then also the AFE, the analog front end imperfection based characteristics, where the, which were specific device characteristics. Um, so basically they're saying that you choose what you're going to use, either channel-based or AFE imperfection-based, based on what application. So AFE techniques might be good for mobile communications because they're, you're moving in between cell towers. Um, channel-based techniques may be better for stationary and indoor scenarios because you can keep that one-to-one -one direct link on a channel. And so it's unlikely that the attacker will be on the same communication channel and have the same AFE imperfections, which makes a combination of these two the ideal solution. Um, another proposed solution is a seamless network integration using composite security keys. So in, co in complex networks, communication and authentication must occur between devices and transmitters not directly linked, like I talked about before. Um, you have devices that don't have a direct physical link or a direct network link. Um, you have devices in between that are sending signals to intermediate devices. So new, new algorithms need to be developed for key generation that include the physical characteristics. And you need to generate a combined physical key to combine with the original public digital key and those two can be used in composite to create a new type of identification. Um, so the f physical layer authentication can be attained this way between indirectly linked devices via this composite key. And then another proposed solution, um, authentication handover simplification using physical security context sharing. Um, this is the idea that in the 5G networks, um, you really need to simplify the authentication handover because it's going to become much more complex, much more processing power dependent. Um, security context prediction and sharing. So this is the idea that various attributes are used to predict authentication handover between cells. So when you're passing the signal from cell to cell, um, you're using the attributes um, DOA, the RSS attributes, and the RTT attributes which are used to predict and beam your cell communication to the next cell. So these, these security contacts can be used and included to be beamed to the next cell and then the physical key has a high potential to be unique and unforgeable in this situation because it's difficult to imitate the actual physical device because uh, normally an attacker does not have the same 
exact type of device that the person that they're trying to hack has. So they did a couple case studies um, based on these ideas. Um, the first was the relay authentication using the multiple attribute technique, the MAMO technique. Um, so basically they tested authentication of amplify and forward relays. So they kind of set up a system of forwarding and amplifying signals. Um, they used a combination of the channel-based characteristics like we talked about before and the AFE imperfections. Um, so they tried to come up with a way to implement both of these in the amplify and forward system. They ran simulations to test the authentication success rates at multiple different relays. And then they found, basically doing this, um, there was a 50% increase in success rate versus conventional techniques that were not using physical authentication. So those that only use digital authentication um, had a worse success rate than what they found with the physical techniques that they were testing. Um, the second case study they did was a cross-layer authentication using a physical key. Um, so they created a simulation of handover scenarios that included uh, legitimate signals and then attackers that were trying to intercept these signals. Um, they created an algorithm for the physical key composite handover method, basically creating a composite key with the digital keys that are normally used and combining that with a physical key. And then they tested the accuracy of this authentication as well as the handover processing delay of this algorithm that they created. So using this, they found that they had a 97% accuracy with signal noise ratio as low as 10 decibels, which is actually a fairly poor cell signal, so they thought they had good results based on that. Um, also the handover delay was similar to traditional um, key algorithms, not using a physical key, up to the 60% network utilization, but they actually found that if they had busier networks that were higher than a 60% utilization, they actually had get, they found superior results um, and their handover delay. So their the processing was actually improved by using a, a physical key in combination with the digital key rather than just using digital keys. Um, so in conclusion, um, they found that this multi-attribute and multi-observation technique was successful in increasing authentication success rates. Um, they found that the cross-layer aided architecture and the physical composite key proved very efficient and accurate under the scenar scenario they provided. And then the other conclusion, which wasn't really tested, was that 5G will bring fundamental impacts to the current physical layer authentication due to the increased network complexity. So there's a lot more work to be done on that end. Um, and then just briefly at the end, just want to talk about some experimental weaknesses that I thought um, were in the study. Um, I guess my biggest issue with the case studies what, was that they were not nearly as complex, I think, as what a real world, world condition would be. So I guess I wonder about the scalability of these algorithms and the, the results that they received and whether they would really receive their same results um, in a real world condition. So I think they really need to do more testing on more complex networks than what, what they did in their studies. Um, and then their 5G solutions were just theoretical. Um, they didn't really do any testing to experiment on what kind of results th they would have in a 5G network. So they need to do further experimentation, you know, as 5G is implemented more and more in the real world. Um, so that's it. Um, that's my paper. Thank you very much and have a great day.